I was posted to Gibraltar. This was 1943. Gibraltar was, and still is, a British colony. Here was the ultimate in fantasy, all summed up in the architecture of the Anglican Cathedral. What should it be? Romanesque or Gothic? Neither. It should be a mosque. And a mosque it is. The British at home are dull. To a person of my tradition and temperament, they are not sympathique. Get them abroad, however. Start them on the fantasy of colonisation. And they change. In Gibraltar, my muse seemed to have found what it was looking for in the way of a subject matter. A conflict had turned into a confluence. Catholic Baroque, the onion domes and the barley sugar columns of the Moors, the soft and fictile humanism of the British. Could one imagine a stranger mixture? Yet it worked here. It contrived a harmony. I saw that I was falling in love with British colonialism. When the resolution of cultural, religious, racial conflict, in real life as opposed to fiction, is achieved through gentle colonialism, then fiction, as opposed to real life, can separate out the elements and allow them to touch in tiny electric shocks which tickle the imagination. I learnt from Gibraltar that I would be happiest when writing about fantastically varied communities on which an alien but benign rule had been imposed. I found such communities in Africa and Malaya. In Malaya there were Malays, Chinese, Bengalis, Sikhs, Tamils, Eurasians. There was conflict turned by the British into a confluence. My brief life as one of the colonizing British was salutary for me as a writer, because it was salutary for me as a human being. The British have, throughout history, evinced two main talents, seemingly opposed and irreconcilable. They have produced the greatest literature the world has seen. They have produced an idea of empire. I think it's only the sweet stay-at-homes who vilify colonialism. Those who, like myself, have helped in the maintenance of the Pax Britannica are more ready to admire than condemn. The literary talent and the colonising talent are cognate in that they both forge an image of unity in a world split like an abscess. Over the Joseph's coat fell the drab but durable cloak of the community-forging British, able to stand all weathers, possessed, despite all changes in fashion, of a glum but sempiternal elegance.